Well, hello, we're moving into chapter 9-5, Changing Dimensions Proportionally, and this is a really cool uh, section, and the one that follows when we do probability is going to be pretty cool. Now, it just so happened to be coincidentally, just today I was walking by the TV, my daughter was watching something called American Restoration, and they were doing something with the Pet Boy sign, or something like that, and it was a huge scaled up model of these three figures, one of them was smoking a cigar, and the person doing restoring was talking about dimensional proportionality on how he had to create a cigar based upon a model where all the dimensions, this was 3D, we're going to deal with 2D today. And he had to, he actually measured it out, he created the proportions, everything, all the scale factors to recreate this. This goes on constantly through everything we do. When I was looking at having a pool installed, um, we had proportional measurements. This is really, really huge in the real world. But since we're in an introductory math course, we're going to be taking a, a little bit more skill and we're not going to be creating pools just yet. Hopefully real soon, uh, you'll start making the connections there on that. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the proportional dimensions. And it has to be proportional. If we just change one dimension, well, look at this three by four uh, rectangle here. If we just changed this guy right here and doubled it to an 8, all I do is just create a longer but same uh, width rectangle. It wouldn't be proportional. We studied similarity and proportion before, so we're going to draw what we, used, what we learned before and try and figure out new ways of looking at uh, geometry. And this is going to play in huge because right around the corner is chapter 10 solids. So we got to make sure it's proportional. So let's take a look at the perimeter. Here we got 8 plus 6, which is 14. Count them all up, twice the length and twice the width, add them up. And, or you could just take 4 plus 7 is, and then double that, however you want to look at it. And then my area is nothing more than 4 times 3, 12, which is a 12. All right, so here's my perimeter, here's my area. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Here we're going to double the dimension, so that becomes an 8 and that becomes a 6. And my perimeter is 14 doubled, which is 28. And the area is 6 times uh, 8, which is 48. So let's take a look at what we did. Now, we know we doubled this, but we're looking at the relationship between the perimeter and the area for now. In solids, we'll, take, we'll add another column right here called volume. So 14 to 28, it looks like we doubled it, but I want, you to show, I want to show you this. When we look at uh, ratios... We're going to do new over old. And I'm going to have this on every single slide, if I remember. And we put our new over here. This is new, and this is our old. All right. And we're going to do for the perimeter ratio, I'll do P sub R is 28 over 14, which is equal to 2. That 2 right there has a relationship to this right here. Double the dimensions. So let's take a look at the area ratio, A sub R, saying we're going to do new, new over old, and we do 48 over 12. That goes into it four times, all right? Now this four, we multiplied the area by four because here we had 12, the area is 12, and here we have 48. We just doubled the dimensions, but the area got multiplied by four. So I'm going, hmm, well, there's other ways to write this four. There's more than one way to write a four in the world. We're going to explore that on this next slide. So here again, uh, we're going to look at an example, but we're going to triple this time. So let's take a look at the uh, perimeter and the area of our old. We'll call this old. All right. And our perimeter is 6 uh, doubled, which is 12. And our area is um, 2 times 6. That's not 6. That's 10. I cannot count. 5 doubled is 10, not 6. I multiplied. And then we got 6 is our area. So that's a 10. All right. Let's kill it, kill it, kill it. And then we're going to triple it. So this is going to be a 6, and this is going to be a 9. So our perimeter is 15 doubled, which is, well, let me write it in blue. So our perimeter is equal to 30, and our area is equal to 54. Because all I did was multiply. Let's go ahead and do our ratios. Our perimeter ratio, I'll do that P sub R is new over old. And that is going to be 30 over 10. Hopefully you made this prediction. 
And our area ratio, A sub R, is equal to 54 new over old over 6, which is equal to 9. So we're going to take a look at what happened here. So this 3 right here and this 9 right here has some kind of relationship with this. Well, perimeter, we're dealing with one dimension because we're walking this very fine, infinitely small, thin, narrow line right here. Area, we're dealing with two dimensions. One dimension, two dimensions. Let's see how it works in a circle. Now, remember, the perimeter of a circle is nothing more than the circumference and the radius of the formula for circumference is pi, 2 pi r, right? 2 pi r. My r is 3. So let's go ahead and figure this puppy out. So just 2 times 3 is 6, so is equal to 6 pi. I better make sure I try and stay neat here. It looks like I'm going to run out of room. So we got 6 pi right here is my circumference. The area is pi r squared, so it's going to be 9 pi because I square that. So this is my old, and here's my new. My new is going to be another circle. Let's do a nice little circle here, a little bit bigger. All right. And I tripled the radius. So my radius is now 9, much, much bigger. My circumference is 2 pi r. So that's going to be 18 pi. And my area is pi r squared. So that's going to be 81 pi. All right. So we're going to do new over old. So perimeter ratio is new over old. And here's my perimeter here, and which is my circumference. So it's 18 over 6. 18 pi over 6 pi. Pi's cancel out. 6 goes into 18 three times, so 3. Well, yep, whoop de doo we knew that was coming because, look, we're tripled. Remember, one dimension, we're traveling around the circumference. Now let's take a look at our new, our uh, circumference of our, I mean the area ratio, area of our new over old. We got 81 pi over 9 pi. Pi's cancel out. 9 goes into 81 9 times. There's another way to write this. I could write this as 3 squared. And we're dealing with two dimensions. Two dimensions, one dimension. I can even put a little 1 up here. 3 to the first power, 3 to the second power. So this leads us to this little flow chart right here, which is our thinking map. Now, all dimensions are, huh. well, anyway, I get distracted. All dimensions of a figure are multiplied by a factor of A. That's all dimensions. That keeps us proportional. That keeps us similar figures. Perimeter circumference changes by a factor of A. So if we did the new over old uh, ratio, it's going to equal to whatever our scale factor was. If I multiplied the dimensions by 3, I could go ahead and multiply the perimeter by 3, so on. And here's an example right here using a square. Um, perimeter of the square, side length of 5 is 20 feet. We multiply the dimensions by 3. We multiply the perimeter by 3. Area. It'll change by a factor of whatever the uh, scale factor is squared. So if I double the dimensions, it's going to be 2 squared, which is 4 uh, times the area. So we multiply by 3. So here's my scale factor right here. So I'm going to actually multiply my area by 9. So it's going to be 9 times the area to get to the new area. And that's exactly what happens here. I went from 25 to 225. And guess what? 25 goes into 225 nine times. So take a look at this, and then you can see what happens. Of course, new area is 225 here. And this area is five, uh, 25, all right? And we basically multiplied the area by 9, or 3 squared, because we tripled the sides. You're going to need to reflect on this, and of course, hopefully you're pausing and thinking about these problems. So once you see the pattern, you can jump right to these typical questions. Describe the effect of change. I don't want, really care what the new area is or the new perimeter is. I want to know what was changed about it. So on the perimeter, if we're going to double the dimensions, we double the area. And guess what? Since we're doubling, which means times 2, 
we're going to do 2 squared, which is equal to 4, and that's what we're going to multiply the area by, right? So the perimeter just is straight up the area is at. All righty. So here's my handy dandy answer right here. The perimeter is doubled and the area is multiplied by 5. And these are the rules that we're going to go by for this kind of concept. Perimeter is also changed by the same scale factor that you used for the dimensions. The area is that scale factor squared in what you get to the new area. So once you do get that kind of concept down, then we can start really exploring uh, some more interesting details of it. It's like working backwards. There are more than one way to do these kind of problems. And I'm just going to show you one way. And you're going to find shortcuts pretty good, but I'm not going to teach you the shortcuts. I'll maybe give you a hint, but I, I want you to... Well, they're not really shortcuts. It's really the objective of what we're trying to get to. But I'm not going to teach you that. You're going to figure that out on your own. A square has an area of 36 meters. So we got 36 right in here. Okay? If the area is doubled, so I'm going to have a bigger square. Um, I'm not going to quite have it proportional, but we'll, you know, we get close enough for government work. So I now have 72. So I went from 36 to 72. Well, I know what these sides are because if it's a square, they're, they're the same. So we know that's going to be 6 and that's going to be 6. So this is going to be something times 6. That's our scale factor. Something times 6. We need to figure out what that it was. One way to do this not the only way, but one way to do it is simply do call this um, side A and side this A. And we know that A times A is equal to 72, so A squared is equal to 72. All right? Take the square root of both sides, so you know A is equal to radical 72, which is equal to 36 times 2. And you can do this in the calculator because we're beyond this now. This is just algebra work. 6 radical 2. So we know that this side right here is 6 radical 2 and we know this is 6 radical 2 and so on so all we did was we multiplied by radical 2 so the answer is multiplied by radical 2 now think carefully on this I'm not going to completely walk you through this but I want you to pause and think about was there a quicker way to come up with this idea right here now I'm going to give you another example a circle has a diameter of 8 feet. So let's take a look at a circle. All right. And it has a diameter of 8 feet. So boom, 8, which means my radius is 4. Not a very pretty radius, but that's okay. And we're going to triple it. So we're going to have another bigger circle. I'll just go ahead and throw it in here. And my rate, the area is tripled. So what we got to do is find pi r squared. So pi r squared is, gives me my area. So I'm going to have 16 pi. Okay, so 16 pi is my area. Well, this one's going to be 48 pi because we triple it. 3 times 16 is 48. So this is 48 pi. What did we do to the radius? We do not know. Again, there's other ways to do this, but I think one of the more algebraic ways to do it doesn't mean it's the best way is to simply solve for r. We know this is r. So if we know if area is pi r squared and our area is 48 pi, we simply do pi r squared and make it and solve for r. Well, I'm going to divide by pi on both sides so I get r squared is equal to 48, right? And I'm going to take the square root of 48. So r is equal to root 48, which is 16 times 3. So r is equal to 16 times 3, which is equal to um, 4 radical 3. So my r right here is 4 radical 3. Okay, so here's our clues. I'm going to leave you with this. It was tripled. All right. I have 4 radical 3 here. I happen to have 6 radical 2 here when it was doubled. All right, so what I want you to do is review this. Hopefully you've paused. And before you come into class, and I think we're doing this lesson on Wednesday, so you've got a few days, I want you to go through these uh, few problems here, uh, seven problems, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yes. And you should be able to do these pretty quick. Now hit the pause button now, because on the next slide I have the answers for you. So what... 
and there's no math here except for number 16. You, you probably need a calculator for that one. You got 15 through 21, and straight out of the book. And here comes the answers. So, spoiler alert. Don't look at the answers until you've tried these. Here's the answers. All right, and the diagonals of Robinson are both multiplied by 8, so your scale factor was 8. Perimeter would be just multiplied by 8, but your area, since you're two-dimensional, would be 8 squared, which is 64. So you see how that works? Let's jump down here to the apothem of a regular octagon is tripled. Well, the area is going to be multiplied by 9. 3 squared is 9. All right, because it grows proportionally. If you do the regular octagon and you multiply the apothem by 3, the thing has to get bigger. That means the sides, everything got proportional. All right, so that is it. This went a little long, but it is a fairly important lesson. If you watch this before we do this in class, you'll be much stronger and much better for it.